Thank you, Mike, and uh, good afternoon to all of you. Uh, my name is Po Chao. I'm coming from National Jiao Tong University. It's my pleasure to talk to you about the most recent research work we have done uh, about how to estimate the blood pressure based on the PPG waveform. So here's the outline introduction, the sensor module we have developed, and the approach uh, we have taken for the feature extraction and the big data analysis. And based on these analysis results, uh, we have established a reduced dimension a neural, network neural network model to carry out the computation. And then there, is, there are uh, experimental results and a conclusion. So here are the pictures of uh, many uh, commercial available uh, PBG uh, bracelets. Okay. Uh, for these bracelets, essentially they have LED and PD uh, for estimating heartbeats. And uh, some of them can provide the information of a blood oxygen. Okay. Very few of them have uh, uh, ECG and PBG. Uh, they claim that they can uh, estimate uh, the blood pressure, but most people uh, think they are not as accurate as they expect it to be. So we're trying to develop uh, PBG only. Uh, hopefully, uh, right now we have uh, pretty good results uh, on the estimating blood pressure and then also blood flow for hemodialysis patients. And also ongoing research effort uh, for estimating the blood glucose as well. So here's the device uh, in the picture. I'm showing the handheld device. So uh, there is a, a PCB, uh, PCB board inside uh, and sensor module, um, front and analog circuits, and signal processing MCU, and also the wireless transmission module. So using this kind of a handheld device, the sensor module, uh, you can have a sensor data and uh, try to um, wireless uh, transmitting the data to the laptop or cloud system. Then you can do the calibration in the cloud. Most recently, we have developed a flexible patch uh, for the PPG sensor. Uh, try to collect uh, the same um, quality label PPG data for the analysis. So that uh, takes some time to talk about PPG, uh, very short. Okay. The PPG sensor essentially is consisting of two different components, LED and the PD. So LED will emit the light uh, going into under the skin. Uh, hopefully, you will reach the blood vessel, uh, which would, you would like to detect. Okay. Like uh, radio artery. Then uh, the lighting power uh, reaching the blood vessel is going to be reflected back to the uh, skin surface and reaching another component of a PPG module, which is PD. Then the PD, of course, will be try to converting the whatever the optical power receive uh, to the electronic signal. If you're looking at the electro, uh, electronic signal, essentially there are two different components. The pulsating component, uh, we call it AC over here, and the other one is the uh, DC components. Okay. The one of the difficulty we'll try to deal with, okay, actually uh, all the people who develop the PPG module, they need to deal with the the um, DC drifting okay, problem. So, because the if you look at uh, look at the AC component, it's essentially only uh, consisting uh, maybe it's only one to three percent of the entire signal. So, if you don't deal with the DC drifting, uh, the signal you have for the AC component essentially will be used to estimating the blood pressure. Uh, that will be uh, containing a lot of noise. SN ratio will be very low. So whatever you have to do, have done for the computation, 
it's going to be a large error. So you need to deal with two different difficulties. One is uh, get rid of uh, DC drifting. The other one is uh, try to do very good high order uh, filter, actually band pass filter, uh, high pass, uh, low pass together uh, to um, increase the SN ratio. So here's uh, the circle we have designed uh, in the sensor module. Uh, at every phone, there's our uh, there are PIA, PGA, ADC, and one of the very important feature uh, in the readout circle over here, you need to uh, check the quality of the signal uh, in the digital computation unit, and also uh, have some kind of a feedback mechanism back to the PGA and back to the DIA okay, to uh, uh, some kind of adaptive tuning in a line fashion, try to get rid of uh, two, uh, two aforementioned uh, difficulty. One is uh, DC drifting, the other one is uh, um, noise. So by doing that, uh, you will have a chance to have a high uh, quality label of a PBG signal. Then uh, you will be able to uh, have a, a better uh, accuracy in the estimating uh, bra pressure. So inside this um, sensor module, okay, uh, there, there's a, as shown in the photo, uh, there's a single PCP board, two-sided. Okay, uh, at one side, there's battery, uh, LED PD, and the front end analog circuits. On the other side, uh, there's a display panel and uh, um, MCU and the wireless uh, data transmission module. So here are the LED and the PD module. Uh, uh, several very important feature uh, we have uh, implemented is uh, uh, there will be uh, the LED and PD module uh, uh, is actually changeable for different wavelengths, and the uh, PGA inside uh, has the functionality of uh, AGC auto gain control, and also uh, we will based on the quality of the PBC signal to online uh, tuning the LED emission intensity in order to take care of a different uh, skin color. Um, after uh, we have, um, have a, a good quality signal, we still need to check several conditions. Uh, the first one is uh, whether or not there is a saturation outlier, and also need to check the, whether or not the frequency content is correct. Essentially, you need to have a first harmonics uh, which is uh, corresponding to the heartbeat, frequency of the heartbeat of a user. And then, uh, most importantly, you need to, before the signal, analog signal going to the ADC, you need to uh, amplify to the four dynamic range in order to have a, a very good SN ratio. Okay, so here's a, a very simple video to show that uh, how to use uh, this uh, sensor module. So essentially, very simple, just put on a radio artery, then uh, you can see your PPG waveform on the screen. It's very steady, and the DC is very stable. Okay. So that's uh, the sensor module we have developed. Okay. The main objective of this study is uh, trying to use the big data analysis technique and based on one single uh, PPG data, not using ECG or using bio impedance information at all. Uh, see if we can use the neural network and uh, some other technique uh, related to big data analysis, then uh, have a very good, have a chance to establish a very good uh, new, uh, neural network model uh, to estimate the blood pressure. So the data we are using for train for training the neural network and then neural network model is over here. Uh, we have uh, essentially 96, uh, 96 um, subjects and uh, uh, 79 are males, uh, 17 are female, uh, which is not very good balanced because most of my 
uh, the, the people we taking the measurements for our campus and in the engineering school, they are mostly male students. So the age range is over here from 21 to the 48. And the SPP range, the DPD range, is about uh, uh, comparatively a uh, wide range. And we particularly uh, try to find out uh, by the 14 subjects uh, with SPP above 130 um, millimeter mercury. Okay. Okay. So before doing anything about the big data analysis, let's try to find out what's the PVG. Why? What's the reason we can use uh, one single PVG signal to establish the model for us to be uh, estimating the blood pressure? Because if you try to read uh, the characteristic of PVG, the second peak of PVG is actually caused by the refractive wave from peripheral artery. Okay, so from the different location of a body, you, you can see the PVG waveform, and based on the the duration between the sec, uh, first peak and the second peak, you can do the analysis, uh, try to figure out uh, what's the velocity of uh, the uh, pulse wave, and based on that velocity, supposedly uh, the information, uh, because the, the blood pressure is heavily depend on the uh, pulse wave uh, velocity, so uh, essentially uh, the conclusion is that uh, you can use one single PVG waveform to estimate the blood pressure. So we are taking a first derivative and a second derivative and uh, try to have uh, eight different time interval as the input feature, also some um, feature in the frequency uh, domain, and then uh, perform the PCA principal component, find out that uh, actually we can take the first five uh, principal components uh, and then the uh, cumulated uh, total variance will be uh, reach uh, as 88%, which is good enough. Then uh, the first five uh, principal components will be taken to train the neural network. And finally, uh, we have reach over here uh, for the but using the, by the standard of the uh, British Health uh, Service uh, Department. So that's, uh, I think this is the first study that uh, using a single PVG waveform and based on the characteristics of the PVG waveform and using the, a lot of data to train the neural network and finally reach uh, require adequate accuracy for commercializing PP sensor module. So that's my talk. Thank you.